Fellow Toastmasters, it is the summer of 2017. I took my 15-year-old son up to Tahoe for a week of adventure. We camped, we backpacked, we rode mountain bikes. It was a great bonding experience. On the last night before coming home, we found a campsite near Silver Lake in South Lake Tahoe. We noticed the lake had two small islands and we made a decision to swim to both islands before driving home the next day. This would be our final adventure. Little did we know how impactful it would be. Next morning, we immersed ourselves in, in, into the freezing cold water of the lake. The first island was only 50 to 75 feet away. We both completed the swim easily. The second island, however, was a few hundred feet away. It was a distance I should have paid more attention to, but without a care in the world, we both plunged in. My son was on the high school swimming team, so swimming to the second island was a, a simple training exercise for him. But I still had the clumsy breaststroke I had learned as a seven-year-old. It had not evolved at all. So why in the world was I doing this swim? Suddenly a few hundred feet felt like a daunting proposition. Approaching the halfway mark, panic set in. The distance to the first island was now the same as the distance to go to the second island. And meanwhile, my son was blissfully plowing through the water. To me, the water was freezing cold. I was exhausted. I could not feel the bottom of the lake with my feet. And I had no swimming skills to get me out of this situation. I remember thinking, this is it. This is how it's all gonna end. But somehow, driven by the fear of drowning in front of my son, I managed to keep going. Eventually, I was able to touch the bottom of the lake near the second island. Stepping out of the water, I collapsed, exhausted. My son was laughing. He had no idea of what I'd just gone through. To him, swimming was easy. To me, swimming was a stupid decision that almost had disastrous consequences. Our swim back to the mainland was uneventful as we took a different route. Driving home, I was anxiously trying to figure out how to explain this to my wife. Within a few days of the experience, I was triggered by a couple of things. First, listening to a discussion on NPR radio. Men were more likely to drown in lakes than women. More men said they knew how to swim, but women were more likely to have had formal swimming lessons. Men who had not had lessons reported being excellent swimmers. I was consumed with shame. This discussion was about people like me. I live near Albany, near Berkeley. The next trigger was seeing signs for the upcoming Albany triathlon. The event intrigued me, especially since the distances were short. 17 laps of the pool, 10K bike ride, 1.6 mile run. I wanted to prove to myself that I could do all three activities, including the swim. I already enjoyed biking and running. I just needed to complete 17 laps using my outdated breaststroke. On the day of the race, I was filled with nervousness and excitement. Swimming was the first event. My excitement soon dissipated. I was in heat two with the high school swim team. What were the organizers thinking? The starting whistle pierced the air. Immediately, 19 of the 20 athletes were thundering down the swim lane, gliding effortlessly through the water. Then there was me, the 20th athlete, in the middle lane, doing his breaststroke as fast as he could, consumed with panic and misplaced optimism that he could catch up. Reality soon set in after the first lap. By then, I'd already been lapped by the fastest swimmers. There was pity in the voices of the lap counters. I was the only one left with 10 laps to go, and the crowd was loving it. I eventually completed the swim just under the allotted 15 minutes. I fared better in the bike rides and the, and the running. I didn't care about my times. I was just delighted to have completed the event. In the days that followed, I obsessed over the swim challenges I continue to experience. But that struggle quickly turned to motivation. I resolved to finally learn how to swim, to put an end to these humiliating experiences. Immediately, I signed up for swim lessons. I was excited. Now I would finally learn how to swim. I showed up to class. They directed me to the indoor pool. 
I was horrified. In the pool was me and about 20 kids under the age of 10. And their parents were all watching on the sidelines. After three lessons, I quit. Frustrated, I went back out to the outdoor pool and resorted back to my breaststroke. It was there that I saw members of the Master Swim Club going through their routines. They were mainly adults. They were getting instruction. They looked amazing. They made swimming look easy. I introduced myself to the instructors and signed up immediately on the spot. To cut a long story short, I trained with the Masters Club for the next 12 months. My goal was to learn how to swim and improve my time at the next Albany Triathlon. I'd get up at 5.30 a.m. three times a week, swim before work. Truth be told, swimming is still a challenge to me, but I did achieve my two goals. I finally learned how to swim properly, including all four strokes, the crawl, the backstroke, butterfly, and even the real way to do the breaststroke. And at the next triathlon, I was able to shave a couple of minutes off my time. Next up will be a, a return to Silver Lake. And this time, I'm going to race my son to the second island. Thank you for listening.